I just thought that I wasn't good enough myself and I like knew that if I just became as good as I wanted to be that there's no chance that they could overlook me and that's kind of the approach that I'm bringing to my business and everything as well now if I'm just good enough and I feel confident in myself good things are going to happen I mean they may not happen today or tomorrow it might be a week from now it might be a month from now but good things are going to happen to good people that work hard and are good enough you know welcome to the AFT construction podcast and today we have eddie lack on with us welcome eddie thank you thanks for having me yeah i'm super excited to have eddie on eddie is a former nhl player so of course you have we'll have to dive into maybe a little bit your ex-nhl career but now you know one of the prolific real estate agents in town so i know you're pretty bu- busy with real estate yeah, no, it's been a fun, f- fun uh, transition. Like, I didn't really think that I would uh, do real estate at 35. I thought I would still, still be playing, but this is what, what, uh, what happened. Uh, and I'm just kind of trying to like embrace it, you know. Well, it's interesting you bring that up, Eddie, because I didn't anticipate, you know, asking you this first off. But I think what's fascinating is I, I, I meet with athletes such as yourself is many of us don't realize that, you know, when you're a professional athlete such as yourself, you've had a long career in the NHL, you've played a long time, and yet you're done and you're in your 30s, right? So you're trying to figure out, <laughs> where do I go at this stage of life? You know, some athletes may get back into, you know, they could work for a sports agency or coaching or be involved to some extent. You know, for you, did you have any idea that you'd go into real estate or what appealed you to go into real estate? So... I always kind of invested in real estate while I was playing and, and, and had, had like uh, the steady income, you know, of like playing in the NHL and, 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 uh, real estate is something that I've always been interested in because it's something that my family's been doing, uh, back home. So, uh, we own a lot of real estate back home, but we own and operate a few hotels in Stockholm as well. Um, so, I kind of thought that that's what I was going to get into when I retired and, and, and uh, the, the long-term plan was probably for me to just move back home and, 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 and uh, learn, learn the hotel business and everything. But I just didn't want to move, move back to cold and dark Sweden in the winters and, <laughs> and just ra- rather um, – stay here and uh, me and my wife we bought our first house here in Scottsdale about five 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 years ago and just uh, felt fell in love with the weather and the people and everything and yeah it's 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 gonna be uh, really hard to live this to leave this place. I just think that we're going to stay instead. So, <laughs> Well, I can tell you, I, I know the appeal. I haven't moved here from San Diego myself and I love Phoenix and uh, Phoenix is quite a big contrast from Stockholm, Sweden. That's not really along the same line, you know, nothing near in the same climate in any way. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, my uh, parents, when we first bought, bought our house, house here, the, they 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 came to visit and they're like oh my god it's so hot here what are you guys doing here <laughs> like this is not a good idea and they they came in august the first time i think which is obviously like the worst yeah. month and then they spent some time here in uh, around christmas and then spring and now everyone has winter houses here 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 and like spend six months here and and six months in sweden which is like the ideal way of doing it right <laughs> that's the way to go i mean if you can have summer in sweden you know winter in phoenix it's it's a great setup so for yeah. you I, it sounds like your family had experience with hotels right you mentioned that in sweden um so when you were doing investing in the nhl and some real estate was it commercial base was it residential did you have a mentor kind of guiding you through that as a player um so my mentor has always been my grandpa because he was the one that kind of uh, started this family bi- business for for us so uh, he's always been been my mentor and i started just uh, uh, in residential my first one was just just an apartment in uh, St- stockholm uh, back 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 home where i thought that i would spend time 
in the off season and everything. Uh, turns out I owned the place for five years and I did not spend an entire minute in the unit. <laughs> uh, but 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 uh, it's a good investment and 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 uh, uh, bought a few lots in a skiing resort in Sweden and just. Uh, uh, developed a few houses and everything so that 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 that's like kind of where my journey started in real estate and that 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 that's kind of what uh, uh, sparked my interest into knowing that this is something that I want to do when I retire so is there a difference like when you're investing in real estate or you mentioned your grandfather's your mentor there and you know from hotels and you you had an apartment there in Sweden how does the market differ as opposed to the united states from sweden uh i feel like the rental market is a lot better here compared to back 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 home i mean just like the income and everything uh, it's 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 uh, uh it's a lot better here and like i don't know exactly why why that that is but i think that uh it is a lot easier to buy a house in Sweden. I mean, for example, la- la- last year I was raving about our three three 3% interest rates here, right? And my mom is like, well, we've had zero point like eight interest rates for like the last four years in Sweden. So like your, your, your like three is not that good, you know? So uh there's there's definitely more re- renters here i think than back home makes sense and so it's kind of a, just a different opportunity to purchase homes there um yeah. as you look at you know uh, you know job market and opportunity uh are there different opportunities in sweden as opposed to here what do you feel you know career wise for you just maybe outside the rental market but individually outside the weather is there another reason why i decided to stay here in the us i think it's just an easier place to make money uh, and 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 uh, uh, Sweden you pay a lot of taxes <laughs> and there is a lot of extra fees and everything and and it is a lot harder making money uh, back home than what it is here 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 I really truly believe that uh, there is a great opportunity just as long as you put the time and the effort into it and 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 uh, uh, you can grow as big as you want you know uh, at home it is it it is a lot easier at home to be an employee compared to growing your own business which, which i think is a lot easier to do over here it's interesting you say that because i've spoken with a lot of europeans over the years and the it's very consistent thread that yeah, there's opportunities as far as the job market go overseas, right in Europe. Yeah, but if you want to be an entrepreneur, you know, sole proprietor, business owner, LLC, it's a lot easier to start businesses here in the U.S. And that's why a lot of them kind of cater to this market. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, that's interesting. And so, f- from your side, do you still own those apartments in Sweden, or or, or what does the investment look like in Sweden still, or is most of your capital here now in the U.S.? Uh, I have moved mo- most of it over here now. I have a little bit left in in uh, sweet Sweden, uh, just just like uh, finishing up a few projects and everything like that. But 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 no, everything is like here because I'm here and I'm doing easier a lot to manage. Of stuff easier to manage here, if you're here. and I want to manage manage it here yeah <laughs> and what yeah. about english i mean you speak english so well especially from sweden you know did you start young uh yeah we uh, we learn i think in fourth grade we started learning english so yeah it's it's uh, uh i was very comfortable with just like the english that you learn in school when i came over here but 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 uh, speaking and like engaging with people it's like it, it's like a whole different a- animal but fe- felt that uh, when i first came over a lot of europeans just like uh, move in with another swede or another european so they like really don't get into 
the whole social aspect of it, I feel like. So uh, when I came here, the first team that I came to was uh, Manitoba Moose in Winnipeg. Um, and I just moved, moved in uh, with two Canadians because I wanted to learn like their ways of do, do, doing things and, and talking and everything like that. So uh, that helped me a lot, I feel like. Yeah, there's no doubt. You know, fortunately, I, I speak Spanish, but again, living overseas in Argentina, being there with people that speak the language, being in the culture to understand, you know, like you said, there's a different, there's there's one thing to what I learned Spanish in school as opposed to speaking it, right? And yeah. they're a little bit different things, you know, when when you're there with the people. When, going back to your grandfather as your mentor with the hotel side, um, is it predominantly like to the tourism industry for the hotel industry? Is that really what, who they're catering to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. And so now that you're here, how has he been a mentor here? I mean, for you, I'm sure, um, you know, there's still, even though you had some familiarity with, you know, real estate and transactions, I'm, I, I would imagine business is still very different transactionally here in the U.S. as opposed to Sweden. Yeah, it is. Like my my questions to him more now is more about like acquiring and building wealth and 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 more more thinking long term because the short term stuff I like kind of know already here and it's just ju- just what you said too it's a lot different in Sweden than what it is here especially with the real estate market and everything right but I just like I I uh, I always enjoy his 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 uh, his advice when it comes to like the long-term thinking and, 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 uh, more, more like, uh, how you build long-term, you know? Yeah. It's really important to think about that. It's, it's one thing, a lot of us today may be looking at the short-term growth or opportunity of financial, cause we have to pay bills, right? You have to get by, yeah. you know, but being able to forecast and think long-term investment and you know how this will come into play later is a huge advantage for you playing NHL, Eddie, do you feel that you have a unique advantage as an ex pro athlete coming in, coming into real estate? You know, how did that prepare you to the career path you're on now? Yeah, a hundred percent. Just, just, just like uh, kind of what we touched on a little bit before, but I just feel that like the hockey, uh, the hockey kind of showed me that whatever I put my mind to, like I can do. And it was really scary at first, you know, like, uh, I've, I've played hockey since I was six and, and to just start something new that I did, didn't really know at 31, it was just like scary. But, but I, I knew that kind of what I did with hockey, that whatever I put my mind to and like, really focus and I really work hot, hot, hard on it. Like anything's possible. So it's funny you say that because as I'm around business owners, one thing I've realized, and it doesn't matter what industry they're in, but I've seen that a lot of business owners have a lot of confidence, right? When they have confidence, they're able to deliver and communicate properly their messaging. They understand the, the why right behind, you yeah. know, the, the business, and I would imagine for you, as you're alluding to, Eddie, that, you know, as a hockey player, I mean, you have to have to play uh, at that level, right? There has to be a level of confidence, right? And 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 confidence can transition into many different avenues and many different careers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, that that's what I think was the hardest in the beginning because, like, my confidence comes from just – experience and practice and like i have executed this in the past so i feel good about it right uh so uh that was the hard part when i first started because i i i um hadn't put in that many hours yet to learn it right uh and 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 uh i just kind of had to just like dive in head head first and just 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 like trust that if i put the time and the effort in the confidence will come eventually 
Well, it's interesting. You mentioned that for anyone who's thinking about, should I start my own company? You know, what's the next steps? I mean, you're mentioned first you had a mentor, so you had your grandfather, right? So you have yeah. a mentor and then diving all in, right? Putting in the time and effort and, you know, having those three things eventually will pay off at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I first started to do the real estate course and I started to read book, book, books and everything, I mean, I was still on cr- crutches from my last hip surgery that I had, <laughs> but I like knew that I wanted to do this and I felt that my career was kind of coming to like an end, you know, but so, so I like, I like didn't want to miss a single moment to, to like get a head start and get better. So <laughs> it's amazing. So what now the, totally different, of course, in the career of hockey, biggest challenge now, like what's your biggest challenge as a realtor? Um, the biggest challenge right now, I would say it's just like the interest rates, yeah. <laughs> like, like the, the sellers don't, don't really want to sell because they're locked into 3% interest rate. And, 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 uh, even if they're downsizing, they're going to have the same amount of payment at the smaller house. Right. So, uh, and obviously the buyer pool got a lot smaller as well. So, um, the interest rates is, 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 uh, a little tricky, but I kind of feel like we're, we're, we're like state stabilizing with them now as well. And, and, um, other chat chat challenges, uh, just being a real estate agent. It's like more being available all, all the time, I think. And, and, that that's something that I pride myself with uh, for for good or bad because there's not always a good time to take a call or like deal with this this situation here or there. But I think that 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 uh, uh, that's something that I want to provide to my clients and like always be available, you know. And 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 uh, yeah, just, it, some, just something that I pride myself with. It's funny you say that because I, I do want to come back to, you know, market inventory and interest rates, but it's interesting that you touched on is the availability. Um, you know, in your world, it's really hard. You know, ideally, same, same as me, I, I think any business owner like you, Eddie, and essentially you are a business owner. When you're a realtor, yeah. you're, you're creating, you know, your own pipeline and clients and referrals. And and because of that, you're working all the time. And any business owner is going to do that. Whereas employees, you know, you're trying to set parameters of, you know, work hours so they have time to, to disengage. Um, at, as you make yourself availability, the, the availability you have to your clients, you know, what is the value add proposition? And again, how do you manage that being that you mentioned you're married and, you know, again, it can impede on, you know, personal stuff at times. Yeah. Yeah. I just feel like buying a house is such an emotional purchase right and 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 it is the biggest purchase that a lot of us will do in our lifetime so uh i want to be there as much as i can to just guide and help and 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 uh i also think that where a lot of transactions falls apart these days it's just because of lack of communication right and i don't want to be like the guy that made it fall apart because of my lack of, you know, so uh, I, 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 I try to set boundaries. So I usually come home at, at five or six, six o'clock at night. And, and, uh, those two, two and a half hours, uh, before my daughter goes to like bed, like those, those, those are, uh, times where I don't want to be on my phone and I want to be present. And uh, I haven't found a single issue that can wait two and a half hours yet, which is good. So, but when you're in that moment and you're trying to get deals done and stuff, it's like tough, tough, tough too. Cause like you want to answer this thing or like <laughs> you want to call this person back but but uh that that's just like um uh something that i want to do for my family you know 
It's interesting you say that because even as a uh, high stress and communica- communicative as the real estate inter- industry is for you, Eddie, you think about this, you know, from, you know, you mentioned six to eight 30 PM or whatever it is you come home. Even if there's urgent items, a lot of those parties you rely on, whether it be, uh, you know, who is the loan officer, the bank, you know, um, other real estate agent, you know, other seller, whatever it may be, those things can typically wait that late in the day. And yet, yeah. you know, so it's probably a good time to actually refocus that time and energy to the family. A hundred percent. And, and yet th- that was like a learning curve, curve, curve too. And, uh, my wife kind of had to sit, sit me down a little bit and be like, Hey, like, this is what we're going to do, do now. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Like, fair. <laughs> So, so what do weekends look like? Because weekends are tough. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, whenever I can, I try to get all my stuff done on Saturday. So Saturday is usually like a full pack day, uh, with open houses and, uh, appointments and everything. Uh, so I try to get as much as I can done on Saturday so I can, take family time on Sunday instead. So uh, it all kind of depends what I have going on. And my family is like very supportive with that stuff as well. But, but um, whenever I can, I like try to take Sundays mostly off. (laughs) Yeah, that's good. I mean, it's to have one day at least because in the realty world, what's tough is you're working Monday through Friday, weekends are tremendously busy. It's one of the unique yeah. career paths that it's seven days a week. It's not like some of us that may have, you know, nine to five, five days a week. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so wh- what are you finding from the client pool? Are more people looking to sell or purchase right now? I feel like it's 50 50 r- right now. Um, we, we still have a lot of people coming from, from other states like California, I feel like, um, my, my specialty has kind of been Canadian buyers since I played hockey there. And, and, um, uh, that buyer pool kind of slowed down a lot from when the interest rates came up a lot. Right. So, um, they're starting to come back too, I feel like. So, uh, it's 50 50 at this point. Uh, but I keep seeing that inventory just keeps dropping by the day as well. And, 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 uh, yeah, we're, we're really in for like an interesting time here. I feel like. It's interesting you say that because I think what's unique to 13 years ago, 14 years ago, the last housing crisis is there was a tremendous amount of inventory, right? So when you have a ton of inventory, of course, prices drop. Whereas now, I, I'm not sure how many listings are just Phoenix specifically. Um, but I know there's not a whole lot. And, and you mentioned the issue here is that you have a lot of clients that have homes where they locked in good rates, low interest rates, and yeah. that horizontal move, we'll call it, even if it's a vertical move, it can be maybe double the price. And that's really what's causing the limited amount of supply chain, you know, on the MLS. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when we were, when we were su- super hot the last few years, we were at 3,000 homes on the market. Um, and we had like eight to 20 offers on each house, right? <laughs> uh, then we went out at the end of the summer. Uh, we went up to, I think, 22,000. And uh, now we're down to 12. So it's, 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 uh, it's really interesting what's happening because we're seeing multiple offers again. Uh, the good product sells in uh, just a few few days again, um, and and uh, uh, things don't really stay on the market for too long anymore. So yeah, it's interesting. So how often are you working with new construction, or are you? Uh, do you have a lot of clients looking for new construction? Uh, not a whole lot. Um, I've, I've, I've mostly had clients that are looking to do flips or, 
or or that sort sort of thing, uh, just strictly as an investment. Uh, I I I th- think I've only had one new build sale uh, in yeah three and a half years I think so. Uh, it's only been like one percent of my business I think so not a whole lot. So with with the uh, flips, it's interesting. You're, you're I would imagine that some of your out of state connections and out of country connections. Um, what are the buyers looking for in a flip? You know, are they having you do any research as far as like feasibility, study and cost and resell? And then how often are you relisting for that client after that flip is complete? Yeah. So, uh, they kind of want the whole package. Uh, so, so they want the feasibility and everything. And, um, uh, we we have been pre-selling a lot lately, uh, which has its uh, pros and cons, in my opinion. Uh, I I I feel like if you can stru- structure it the right way, uh, the pros are good because you get mo- most of, of your money out. Um, but uh, again, cons are. Uh, the new buyer that comes in might want to change a lot of things. Uh, the the market might go up a lot during that 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 time where you're on a co- co- contract, so you might leave a lot of money on the table. Uh, I don't really feel that when you pre-sell, you get the the most value out of the house. Uh, but but that's just my experience. I'm like sure sure. Sure that there are other people that had better experience than I had. <laughs> well, I think anybody listening that has been through um, the client relation is tough, right? When you're building for a client, it's tough. There's a lot of expectations. It can be even more difficult if, a, if as you mentioned, a buyer comes in midstream, right? So yeah. if you're doing a flip, you bring in a buyer. At some point, the buyer may say, I like most of what you have, Eddie and team, but I want to make some changes. So... You know, how have you consulted the clients just having the experience you have now, um, even though they may have to hold on to the money and there's carrying costs and so forth by waiting till the end, you know, just the upside, you know, how that, you know, how to manage that process when someone comes in too early. Yeah, no, it's tough. I mean, my, my clients wants their money out as soon as possible. Uh, but, 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 uh, uh, it's more about educating them about, uh, the process and then just just having them make the decision i feel like and 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 there's there's de- definitely been decisions that i don't agree with and and things that we sold way too early and 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 uh, uh, with too many changes uh, my my new kind of r- rule of thumb i would say is that don't pre-sell anything before it's framed out uh, because when you're framed out, you usually have mo- most of your finishes and everything ordered already and and, and uh, the layout is already there and it's kind of too late to make big, big changes, you know? Um, so um, that's kind of my new rule that I kind of invented for myself. Well, so sometimes you learn the painful way, right? I mean, you get to, yeah. you sell it too early before frame stage and you realize you're leaving yourself wide open, you yeah. know, to million changes because client, clients can come to you and say, Eddie, what do you mean? I can't change, you know, these walls. It's not framed yet. And so it's really impossible to hold them to some sort of standard beforehand. Yep. 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 And, and that's kind of what I feel like this whole, uh, process, has been like like the the real estate agent stuff has been a lot easier than than the developer side, but I think that I just need need someone like you in my life instead. I think it makes it a little easier. <laughs> yeah, it's a little it's, easier. Yeah, it can be <laughs> tough no matter what. Um, from everyone you're networking with, market wise, do you see a slowdown coming? What are you forecasting? I, of course, you don't know exactly what's going to happen but what are you seeing happen at least over next six months to a year as far as health of the market um i don't know like it 
it's going to sound like such a real sell, but I don't think that the market is going to slow, slow, slow down. I mean, I, I, I for, 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 foresee that within the next year or so that, that the interest rates are going to drop. Uh, I don't think they're going to drop into the, the 3% that we've seen, but they're probably going to be in like the mid to high fours. So that's kind of what I'm predicting. Uh, and I think that we're kind of going to be back in 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 the in the storm that we saw saw before because we still have so many people moving here and so many jobs are being created in in the state that I just and spe, spe, especially the way that that California is like now as well I think that just so many people are just move, moving here right so. Uh, I just think that we're going to uh, be back to where we were a year ago. Yeah, it's amazing you say that because I can only think right now, a lot of us anticipated some sort of slowdown, right? I know for yeah. the production, you know, entry level stuff has has slowed down, but I know most remodelers, custom builders throughout the country, designers, architects, I mean, they're still really busy. And that's with interest rates. If they come down, there's still a demand of people that have a lot of confidence in real estate are relocating due to a lot of circumstances and I can only imagine as much as we're still trying to catch up Eddie on a supply chain and product and material labor, you know? Yeah, exactly. And I feel like the, the building and the development side, uh, slowed down for like a little bit when the interest rates first shot, shot up. Uh, but the last, uh, the last like month and a half to two months, I feel like uh, all the good lots and everything is still getting scooped scooped up within a few days again. And I feel like the uh, the insecurity that we had for like a few few months there, it's all gone. I think everyone's just like back to uh, wanting to build and wanting to do projects again. It's interesting you say that because we still have clients looking for land and it's hard to come by. I, yeah. I would imagine that you're not seeing a whole lot of land available for sale currently. No, no. And and everything that looks kind of interesting is just getting scooped up in in a few days, I think, too. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, not as crazy as it was before when things didn't really hit the market. It's just everything got sold off market but 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 uh, yeah things are still moving so how how do you market to your clients eddie because what's you're, you're similar to me in the sense that you know i find a client um you know we build for them it's pretty rare they're going to build again and if they do it might be for a few years uh, so you're continually having to rebuild that pipeline right of of and, and i know for you there could be referrals you know and, and network there but how have you expanded your your business over the last three years yeah I have been pretty much a hundred percent referral and network, um, and uh, uh, I've I've tried to to do a little bit of the buying leads and stuff, but uh, as a stuttering Swede, it's tough to cold call, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so no, I've 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 been strictly referral. A network base so uh, basically what i've been doing is just trying to um, uh, build my social media presence out as much as i can and 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 uh, um, i i kind of took a pause with it for like a little bit because i was just so bi- busy getting the deals out that i had in the pipeline that like I didn't really have a lot of time to to uh, work on restocking my pipe pipe pipeline you know uh, so um, that that's kind of what I've been getting back to the last month and a half here I feel like and just 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 uh, uh, putting out content and I'm getting a ton of leads from Instagram, just from uh, um, friends or people that are are following 
my friends and then they they retweet or so, so, something with something that I do so yeah like uh, uh, social media is kind of like where where I get uh, all my business it's interesting from social media with that social media do you feel I mean what's your connection to you know other players in the NHL and them relocating here do you have a connection still to those in the league yeah 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 and I'm in this uh, uh, athlete referral network as well that we kind of just like refer uh, players in different sports to one another too. So um, the uh, the referral stuff has been really good too. Why do you think that is? There's such a – I've seen that a lot of athletes, you know, they stay pretty unified. Um, working together and referrals super important as you could kind of break in like you've done into that – arena network um you know it always pays dividends right especially as you build a good reputation why do you think it is such a core group of you know athletes that um that stick together we'll say i think it's just kind of what we touched on before i think when you got to a certain level in sport uh you know that this guy's a hard worker and he or she uh puts the time and effort into whatever you get, give, give them. Right. So, uh, if I had have a client that are being relocated to New York, I like know that this agent is, is, it's just going to take really good care of them, you know? Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, especially a trusted advisor. Um, let me ask you this, maybe deviate a little bit from real estate for a minute. Um, what, you know, hockey is unique because the, the pain tolerance for hockey is quite a bit different than other sports, right? And, you know, th- of course, there's a lot of contact in hockey, but it's it's pretty well known that there's a lot of players, you know, they're dealing with substantial injuries, teeth knocked out, and they're coming back in stitches, you know, it's pretty common. Um, why is that level, you know, just that pain level and that desire to be better is so much different in the sport of hockey as opposed to others? I don't know. Uh, I honestly don't like know. I I I obviously see guys that play through like the rib injuries and the broken bones and like I mean la- last year in the playoffs I think we had a guy that played through broken leg right. Yeah. I, mean, it's, I mean I don't know. It's 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 a crazy. Uh, game and I just think it's cra- crazy people in it, you know, <laughs> like, and, uh, a lot of guys know too, that there's only 23 or 24 spots in a team. And, 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 uh, when you sit, sit out and you let someone else play, like you're running the risk of so, someone else taking your spot per- permanently, you know? So, uh, yeah. It's, it's better to just suck it up. <laughs> yeah, it's funny to say because it's, you know, in the NFL, they use the term not for long, right? NFL, because if you sit, it's just an opportunity for someone else to play. And so yeah. that's another sport where you tend to see players, you know, kind of play through pain a little bit more because, it you know, baseball, basketball, it's a little bit more set. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to replace. And that's not the case in hockey and, and football. No, no, no. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. What, I don't know what it is, but, but, but yeah. Uh, especially come playoff time. I mean, guys will play through anything. <laughs> it's incredible. What What are some of the things you had to play through? I mean, you were goalie, so you're like right at the core of the action, right? So I mean, <laughs> just I, I'm sure not every day was just tip top shape as you get out there for each game. No, I mean, I like I like I like wouldn't say that I had had a ton of stuff, but but. Uh, uh, one time I broke a finger in warm up and, and like, uh, couldn't really hold my stick at all, but like I had to play, play. Right. And I think, I think I dropped, dropped, dropped my stick like 10 times that, uh, during the game and everything. Right. Uh, had a few like bulging discs that, that wasn't very fun with like the hip and the internal rotation and everything. And then obviously I had two hip, hip surgeries that, 
made me retire but 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 yeah like uh, uh that stuff was probably the worst like the the worst was the concussions because i had two long ones and that's that's obviously some, some something that you can't really play like through and uh i remember my first one i was out a month a month and a half and i just came like back and then um for like for like a warm up before we go go on the ice we we just uh, play soccer to warm up and my first game back i just got drilled in the head by a so- 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 soccer ball and i was out for like another month and a half i think oh my god. And just like oh my god that was probably not the smartest thing i've done but yeah <laughs> Well, I know after hockey, you dabble a little bit of coaching. You know what led to the opportunity at ASU to be an assistant coach? Uh, I just wanted to still stay within the game, and I saw it as an opportunity to give back a little bit uh, to 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 like the sport that's given me so much. And uh, yeah, just just wanted to uh, stay within the game and not just like play one day. And then the next, not to have any part of hockey at all. So um, I, I I talked to Greg Powers there, the head coach, and 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 uh, uh, he wanted me to help out with like the goalies and everything. Uh, he promised me a new new rank by the se- second year, but it took until my fourth year until it was ready. But but uh, uh, it's been a fun fun uh, journey helping them out too because like that program has grown so fast like i mean they've only been a division one program for like seven years i think and 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 uh, to make the tor- tournament a couple times as an independent it's just unbelievable so yeah it's been fun who would have thought that there's hockey in scottsdale phoenix who would have thought? And then uh, there's a vote here, right, uh, to keep the Coyotes in Tampa. So we'll see how that how that one goes. But I hope it's going to go well. It looks like it at least. Yeah, I think so. I think Tempe and, you know, even Phoenix, you know, Mesa, I mean, they should have put the Coyotes a little bit more close into town. I think they'd have a lot better fan base. It's a little far, you know. The Cardinals can get away with it playing once every – you know, a couple yeah. of weeks for in the NFL, but it's it's on the wrong side of town for most of us, um, especially for the corporate, right? Like you and Scottsdale, your client, Scottsdale, Phoenix. I mean, yeah, it's tough to get out to the West Valley. From, um, you know, as you look back to the NHL, what's something that many of us would not know, right? The day-to-day life as an NHL player, you know, something that sticks out that you remember that most of us probably aren't familiar with. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh... I don't know. Like maybe let me ask you this: What does travel look like? What does what does travel look like? As you're traveling from city to city, I mean, NHL, some of the NBA in the sense where you're playing a lot of games, right? Very similar. Yeah. You know, it's um. So you're going from city to city. Sometimes you're back at home. What does that road stand look like? You know, as you're on the road and you know just a normal day, uh, you know, of travel. Yeah, yeah. So when I played in Vancouver, we were the most traveled sports team in North (laughs) America. so You're too far from everything. <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, basically, if we were on the road for 10, 10, 10 days, uh, we probably had six or seven games baked into those ten days, uh, and uh, you you uh, uh, you usually play a lot of back to back games when you're on the road. So uh, it's basically you would. Um, come into the first city that you were going to play in the day before um, you have a practice in the morning the day of the game play the game fly to the next city right off of the game and you could come in at like two three o'clock in the morning uh, and um, then just go straight to like the hotel 
get a little bit of sleep and then just like up and practice and then play again the next night right uh, so um sleep schedule was a little messed up because you're tra- tra- traveling through a lot of different time zones and everything like that and and um when you're in season you're really just like trying to get as much sleep as you can when you can right and uh it wasn't that that hard for 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 like me but i imagine would get with guys that had kids and stuff and um you come home from like a road road trip and everything at four in the morning and then your kids wake up at six you know like it's 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 a uh it's a grind but they really take good care of us like the food on the plane and everything i mean you get a three course meal as soon as you sit down on the plane and everything so uh when i played there was always so much that you could complain about and like you were sore or like the travel schedule but like now when i look back at it i'm like oh life was so easy then <laughs> to now like you you skate in the morning and then you go home and take a nap yeah. <laughs> oh that, that's tough yeah <laughs> right so 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 no uh, life was just like hard in different ways because you just push yourself to the limit every single day but it was shorter hours you know what well you mentioned how important recovery sleep rest right diet nutrition i mean these are really important aspects for you because your body right that's your that's your tools to be successful in the profession when you're flying and traveling um what does the plane situation look like? Are these like the pods when you're flying overseas, you can actually lay down? Are they like first class? I mean, how's the comfortability of flights? And again, you don't jet lag and, and so forth. So it's not the pods, uh, but it's if you're flying a domestic flight, you know, the first class seats, mm-hmm. every single seat is like that all the way back. Um, so, 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 uh you have space and 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 uh, uh there's no middle seats or anything like that it's just two on each, each like side um and 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 yeah there's uh, there's not too much to complain complain, complain about, about. <laughs> and, and and like yeah like you always get the same uh uh flight attendant and everything like that so it's easy that's nice. And then what is what does packing look like? Um, you know, when you're packing on these trips, are you just packing your own personal clothes and then the you know, the team's bringing all the gear and sticks and everything else? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh you only have to worry about your personal stuff like uh, suits for the games and and uh, uh a lot of guys have like a lot of recoverment uh, uh recovery stuff like the norm attack and everything packed um and 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 uh, yeah yeah so as a, as a, as a kid growing up in sweden what makes you want to play goalie and pick that position <laughs> so i saw sweden won the olympics in 94 um and uh, i just like thought oh my god hockey looks like the best thing ever so i wanted to play hockey uh, but uh, they didn't have room for me until the next year. So my dad begged that I could start with the ones that were one year older than me. And they already went through like a full year of skating school and everything. So I was by far the worst player out there. <laughs> uh, and then a couple of years in, we started playing goalie. And I was just like, oh, like this is actually a way for me to like, fit in with everyone else and like not be the worst guy. So, uh, I just, I just ended up being the goalie. Cause I was like the only way that I could really like contribute to like the team. <laughs> it's funny you say that because what's interesting as a male, especially being a young boy playing sports, there's a huge difference, um, in age range, a year younger than a lot of, you know, members on your team is a huge difference especially if they started earlier and have a little bit more skill skating and so forth 
I mean, I, I can only imagine that, you know, we spoke about confidence earlier in the podcast that that led and kind of drives to the confidence that you have today. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, 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 uh, uh, it really showed me that I have to work for it, you know, and, and, uh, uh nothing was ki- ki- given to me from like an early age and, 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 uh, um, my my dad ended up put 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 putting like a lot of time in with me to like catch up to all the other kids and then uh, as i grew grew older he uh, he just fall, fall, followed me around and he ended up being my coach up until i was 16 i think so <laughs> yeah yeah just just like uh, uh fun doing it together with him, I guess. So, well, I think there's something to be said because for those that know your story, right. If I'm not mistaken, you were undrafted. So you're undrafted, you end up making the NHL. It it goes to show you that, um, you know, not only is it super difficult to get to the next level, but to come undrafted, I mean, there, there, it just shows that there's a deep, uh, dedication personally, um, there's a drive that you have that's pretty unique to, to get to that level. I mean, that's not, not many people make it from undrafted to having actually a career in, in any league. No. And I think there, there's just like so many people that could have been so good, but they just give up too soon, I think. And uh, for me, the biggest thing was just that I kept getting better every day. And I saw, saw that I was developing and I knew that like if I just do my my part here and I keep working like I am gonna achieve my goals eventually um and 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 uh I was just like a late bloomer with everything I felt like so so uh I wasn't really in a rush I was just like when it's my 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 like time it's gonna happen it's interesting you say that because I think any business owner, I think a lot of us, you know, you mentioned social media before and social media has a lot of benefit, right? As far as marketing and building a network and getting leads and, um, you know, showcasing your value. But a lot of times we can look at somebody saying, oh, well, I'm not them, right? They're, they're here. I'll never get there without realizing, well, one of two things, one that may not be as good as they're portraying, but more importantly, there could be a lot of work behind the scenes that got them to that point. Like you mentioned, Eddie, and you know, so many of us in business or life or athletics uh, cut ourselves short because we don't realize that maybe we're just as good or we can compete just as well. Or yeah. we may be a late bloomer, as you mentioned. I know I was a late bloomer. And so some of this is that it's just a matter of time. But if you're dedicated in your craft and you find mentors, as you mentioned early on, and you you, you set the tone through each stage that there could be a lot of opportunity down the road. Yeah, exactly. And like, I mean, I I just thought that I wasn't good enough myself and 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 like i like knew that if i just became as good as i wanted to be that that there's no chance that they could overlook me and 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 that's kind of the approach that i'm that i'm bringing to my business and everything as well now it's 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 uh uh, if i'm just just good good enough uh and i feel confident in myself like uh good things are gonna happen I mean they may not happen today or tomorrow it might be a week from now it might be a month from now but 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 uh, uh, good things are gonna happen to good people that work hard and and are good enough you know well as we close this out I know one of the most important things you said too is that you're looking every day to get better right from athletics to realty and you know, I know us as a company, like there's mistakes we've made in the past with clients and projects. And it's like every day we're trying to fix that and be better that we know tomorrow will be a better builder than we were today. So I think that's outstanding advice, Eddie. Um, you know, before we let you skip out, what do you do for fun now that you have had been through surgeries, ex player, you know, family, <laughs> you know, what does your, your fun look like? I golf. I love to golf. Good for you. I love How, to golf. How's so the golf game. Good, good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, Hockey players and baseball players are always good at golf. It's not fair, just for the record. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 a fun, fun, 
fun way to just uh, uh, be outside. Uh, I have a se- second kid on the way, so we're going to have a boy in August. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly how much time I'm going to have to <laughs> go off now, uh, but uh, I am starting to bring my daughter out uh with me because if she's starting to golf then i'm kind of gonna have that excuse you know (laughs) yeah just bring the kids right makes it better (laughs) yeah (laughs) well i love that so um for those listening where can they find you uh so my website is uh, edilac.com and you can find me on um, instagram at edilac uh, twitter the same um and yeah we'd love to connect with y'all Well, Eddie, you've been amazing. I can't thank you enough for your time and uh, really really appreciate you joining the podcast today. Thank you for having me. If you give value from the show, please support us by giving a five-star rating and review on whatever platform you listen to. And I also have a favor to ask. We've had some incredible guests that come on and share their wisdom, their knowledge about their business. So if you have friends or family members that could benefit from those episodes, please share it with them, as well as any other business owners that you're networking with that could get value from the podcast or certain episodes, please share those as well. Again, subscribe, make sure you're following any questions that you have topics. We've had uh, listeners reach out about certain guests that we should have on the show. Again, brad.l at aftconstruction.com. Email me for topics to address guests that we should have on. And even if you think you'd be a great guest for the show. So again, thank you for all your support and we'll see you next time.